Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters. We want to thank God for giving us another day and allowing us so that we can hear the word of God. And uh, I just want to say it will always good sometimes to have your Bible with you so that when you hear the scriptures, you are also able to read it and remember the passage so that you can meditate upon the passage as you go through the word of God. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that the precious invitation that was open to Israel to come and drink and waters of life freely and without cost is too open to thirsty souls in this church dispensation. Thank you that this promise continues to be open to whosoever will, will believe on the Lord. Jesus Christ for their salvation. Both Jews and Gentiles, thank you that we have been baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit of God. And that in him we are free to be the bread of life and drink deeply of the living water. Thank you for that salvation given freely to whosoever will come. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I will call my brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God coming from Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 13. Okay, brother Ben, please come. Praise God, and I hope you um, had a wonderful week and you're blessed and that you um, got a lot out of reading the word this week. It's amazing what Johnson said, that we really got to get in and read, it, read the word ourselves and not just rely on Johnson to read it to us. Um, it's important that we uh, take our Bible places. You never know, you might have a, a minute or two to have a quick read. So, yeah, it's great Johnson said that. But as he said, Isaiah 55, um, and it's called An Invitation to the Thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, Come, buy and eat. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander, and of the people. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendour. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and make it bud and flourish so that it yields seeds for the sower and breads for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty but will accomplish whatever I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountain, mountains and hills will burn into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. 
Praise God, what an amazing verse. I just love uh, Isaiah 55. Uh, every time I read it, I get something new and we'll find out what new stuff Johnson's got for us this week. So we'll get him back and hear the amazing message God's given to him. <coughs> Thanks, Johnson. Uh, this morning I've decided to come up with a theme, Come and Be Satisfied. Come and Be Satisfied. I don't know about you, but I, I love receiving invitations. It's something that, that is really good. Uh, they, they make me feel special because they deliberate and have um, me special in, in mind when people think of you. And when they invite you, which means they've been thinking to say, okay, this person is worth our invitation for you to come. Now, sometimes invitation can be disappointing. Come to the wedding, but don't forget a gift. <laughs> or come on vacation with us, and maybe you want to buy a timeshare. Uh, invitations quickly lose their appeal when there is an agenda hidden behind. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, receiving an invitation means someone is taking their time to think of you and wants you to be part of something special. So I just don't take invitations for granted. I take them seriously. So when I'm invited, I really take time to think about the invitation, to prepare about the invitation, because it's something very important. So what is the greatest invitation you have ever received in your life? Do you remember it? Well, there is an invitation which will beat your greatest one, hands down. For there are invitations, but there is also the invitation. The invitation promises more than just a good time or a wonderful experience. The invitation is filled with more joy, fulfillment, hope than any other person setting could ever give. There are no hidden fees, no hidden agendas, and it costs you nothing. That's the invitation. It costs you nothing. The invitation is what many of you have been waiting for your whole life sound too big good to be true well it's not because this invitation is not of this world it's out of this world the invitation comes from god through many sources but today the invitation comes through the prophet isaiah and isaiah 55. obviously there is nothing new about the invitation it is timeless it was originally extended to the people of god as they wandered in the wilderness trying to find their way Soon they become so desperate that they were grasping at anything and everything which looked like an answer. They were grabbing anything they thought this is the answer. Remember the golden calf and the invitation to fall back. So God clarified the invitation often but never more clearly through the second Isaiah. Listen to the clarion call. The chapter opens with the heart cry of God to everyone to pause and consider his invitation. The invitation is ecumenical. I don't believe in the ecumenical movement that people talk about today, but I do believe in God's ecumenical movement, which is that the invitation of the gospel is to go out to the world. However, it is limited to one class or everyone who thirst. That is what he said. Everyone who thirst. But notice that it is limited to only certain ones. Everyone who thirst. It is for those whose thirst has not been quenched by the many made systems and bars of this world. You go to any bar, you are not quenched. You go to any system, you are not quenched. You go everywhere, you are not quenched. But this one is made for those who have not been satisfied by the many made citizens, systems of this world. So the invitation is to drink and long for the eternal springs. The eternal ones that comes right from in. This invitation is to every man, woman and child on the top side of the world. It means every man of every station in life, in all strata of society, from every race, the tribe, the tongue, condition and color are all included. The invitation is for everyone. Everyone. So now, are we prepared for a life-changing invitation? 
Come and satisfy your thirst. Come and satisfy your hunger. Come and satisfy your soul. Come and satisfy your thirst. That thirst is common to all, if you know. Taste is common to all. We all understand this craving. We become especially taste in dry times. Taste speaks of inner cravings, the ones that come from inner. Many people make vain attempts to satisfy human taste. People think that maybe if they've got money, they'll satisfy their human taste. They've got positions, they've got possessions, they've got prestige, they take alcohol, they take drugs, they take pleasure, and they've got pride. They, they think if they have got all these things, they are satisfying their hunger. Our Lord is inviting us to come and drink living water. If you remember in John 4, when he talks to the Samaritan woman, he said, come and drink the living water. That you will never taste again. That's the woman, what she was told. That you will never taste again. Only when you say, I am utterly dissatisfied with myself. When you say that, it means you are thirst, and I'm thirst. I'm dissatisfied with all the world can offer me, which I have tasted. It means I'm thirst. Is my spirit altogether dissatisfied with all the formalism of religion? Then do I thirst. Blessed thirst, it is the only prerequisite to enjoyment. So this is the invitation for everyone who thirst. So if you say, I am not interested, I am not first. I am satisfied with the things of this life. Then it is not for you. <laughs> then this message is not for you, my friend. It is not for you until you are first. Only those who are first, this message is for them. If you are driving and all of a sudden you see on a billboard the picture of a bottle pushed down into some cracked ice, may it looks good. May look good. There is only one way to print it on the sign, first. So when you are driving and you see the word first, the company that put on the sign hopes you are first. They want you to stop at the next service station and buy a cock and whatever they are selling. You are first. If you have your thermos bottle filled with iced tea or orange juice, I am not thirst. Drive on. But if you are thirsty, you pull off your car and you just go right at the service station to get what you want because you are thirsty. And that's what the advert is telling you to do. You have been driving for a long time. We know that you are thirsty. Can you just pull over and have a drink? At the crossroads of life, God has put a sign, thirsty. Or everyone that is this, are you tired of this world? Have you found that does not satisfy you? Do you long for something better? God says, I have something for you. I've got something for you. Come and satisfy your hunger. Come and satisfy your hunger. Hunger alerts us to the need for nourishing food. Spiritual hunger calls for the bread of life. Blessings are promised to the spiritually hungry. You may, uh, Matthew 5, verse 6. six Human efforts to satisfy spiritual hunger fail. The question asked is, where do you spend your man for what which is not bread? Why do you spend your man for that which is not bread? This is what it is. The pleasures of this world are inexpensive. The pleasures of this world are very expensive, to tell you the truth. They are very expensive. You have to pay for them. Not only are they expensive, but they never satisfy you. They never satisfy you. The question is asked, where do you spend money for that which is not bread? Where for do you spend money for that which is not bread? The pleasures of this world are very expensive. You have to pay for them. Anything you have to pay for them. Not only are they expensive, but they never satisfy you. They are counterfeit. They are sodas and cannot satisfy the soul. Then where is happiness? You won't find it in money. I read a story about a woman who was married to a billionaire. She had everything she would want. 
If she would want to buy jewelry, she would get it. Anything she would want. But the billionaire was an abuser. She would beat her day in, day out. Every night she would beat her when she comes home drunk. And one day she thought of, she decided enough is enough and she ran away with only a night dress. And she, the story was saying she later was married to a person who was just ordinary, but she was happy. <laughs> so happiness is never found in money. The word of God is bread also. A lot of Christians put their money into that which is not bread, although they think it is. It would be well to investigate where you give your money. It may be that you are buying a lot of sawdust, which won't satisfy your heart and life. Why don't you come to the table where you can get some water, wine, milk, and bread that satisfies? That's where all we need it to be today. Only Jesus satisfies this inner appetite. People search for satisfaction of soul, spending money for that which is not bread, laboring things that do not satisfy. We need to seek God while we have the opportunity. God is available to us. He wants to be found by us. If you only repent and call out, he will answer us. True spiritual renewal begins when we seek God wholeheartedly. If we don't seek God, we will miss out on his presence in our lives and the blessings that ours when we live in his presence. So when we sense our spiritual hunger, naturally we look where we can get food for ourselves. In our text, God tells us, here that your soul may live. So the food we want is need is in God. So just as God say, said in Christ, come to, to me. So here he says, hear me. Hear me. Don't listen to those who can save you only junk food. Don't listen to those who are advertising, say, if you drink this one, you will never quench. You will quench again. What they say to you and the promise they make are nothing but garbage. I never thought that in this world there are even wines that are of even prices that are so exorbitant. Prices up to $1,000, $2,000. But even if you drink, you will never get quenched. No one can be properly nor adequately fed on garbage. Our true spiritual sustenance is in Christ. He is the bread of life, as he says himself. Moreover, he said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Hear that and you shall live. He is also the water of life. He is the water of life. To a Samaritan woman at a well, he said, the water that I shall give him will become in him spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Spring, springs of living water. No one can live physical without bread and water. They are two basic essentials for human existence. And no one can live spiritually without the bread and the water which are in and of Christ. How does Christ feed us? Our text answers, Hear that your soul may live. Christ feeds us, not through the mouth, but through our ears. Through our ears. Life results from hearing the word of God, which is Christ. The food we give through our hearing cannot be bought. For come, buy wine and milk without money and without a price. You don't need anything. Just go. We really agree that, isn't it? Have you ever tried to buy love? I've seen people trying. Some parents try to buy their children love by giving them everything they want. But what a failure. Ever tried to buy friendship with money? You don't buy friends with money. You don't need to show money. You get it for free. But when crisis comes, if you buy friendship with money, when crisis comes, we learn the money spent for friendship was wasted. They can desert you. The same is true with our spiritual values like faith and peace. They cannot be bought at any price. They come only as gifts flowing from the spiritual food provided by Christ. You can't buy those things. They who hear God through his word, Jesus Christ, have their spiritual hunger met. 
There is a hunger for God. It is expressed by Job. All that I knew where I, I might find God. Later in the chapter from which our text is taken, we read, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. This is basically longing of humanity from the time of Eden. Where can God be found? He is the word which Christ for Jesus said, The Father and I are one. He told Philip, "Ye who has seen me has seen the Father. So hear the word, you have God in Christ speaking to you. If you hear the word, you have got God in Christ speaking to you. He's speaking to you. There is something missing in your life right now. There is something missing. Something is missing. It's like a shoe without salt. How does it taste? You can feel it. There is something missing. And you always say, can I have some salt? Because it doesn't taste well. I feel a certain emptiness. What is it? How can a person have so much and so many blessings and you feel unfulfilled? You have got your car, you have got a house, you have got everything that you think you have. But still, I can see that you feel unfulfilled. There is something missing. What can fill us with the good things, good thoughts and good feelings? Our text says, Hear that your soul may live. Hear the word of God that tells us good things. You are loved. You are loved by God. You are precious enough for God to die for you. That's why God has to go for the cross only for you. Specifically for you. You are a child of God destined for eternal life. Hear the good news and your mind and heart will be filled with the fullness of God. Do you ask, where can I hear the word of God? Maybe that's the question you're asking right now. Let me answer you. Go this Sunday to a church near you and you will hear the word of God being taught. Attend worship service at your local church and you will hear the word being preached. We have got a lot of people who look very fit but spiritually they are suffering. Suffering from spiritual kwashioka. Take some time daily to open the Bible and you hear the word of God by reading it. In prayer, God will speak his word to your heart. Now God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my way, says the Lord. On verse 58, on our verse 8 of Isaiah 58. God's ways is different from men's ways. The gospel is God's way. The word of God is God's way. It is not man made. It's different from men. No man could ever have devised it. The word of God is not man-made. You may have said to yourself, if only I knew God's thoughts. Some people act as though they do know God's thoughts. They are full of advice and seem to believe that they understand exactly what God thinks and that what you would do in every situation. Such people need to recognize that God's thoughts and ways are far beyond our ability to fully understand. No one can read the minds Especially God's mind. You can't. You can't. That's why he's saying, my ways are not your ways. When you think of revenge, God says forgive. <laughs> he says, if someone beats you this cheek, give him another cheek. <laughs> God's ways are not your ways. Totally different from you. And that's what God does. On the other hand, God's word gives us a glimpse into God's thoughts and desires. God has called us to forsake our world with thought, patterns and assumptions and to learn instead his principles for life. Conventional worldly wisdom is often the exact opposite of God's ways. When we think of people who are professors, think of who are doctors, it's totally sometimes the opposite of God's ways. Because we take them highly instead of remembering that God is the only one. So by saturating our minds with God's word, we begin to see both God's message and God's method. As we read, we consider questions such as, how has God worked in history? How does he work in our lives? What are the greatest concerns of God's heart? What should be our greatest concerns in life? We are now seeking to understand. So God's word to Isaiah gives us a great hope. Through it, we learn to see life through God's eyes. We learn to think God's thoughts. This is what it is. All that has been said about God feeding our souls depends on whether we are spiritually hungry or thirsty. 
If we are not hungry and have no appetite, we neglect eating. That's right. We don't eat. So we must ask ourselves, do we hunger, thirst after righteousness and spiritual food? Do we hunger for those things? In conclusion, are we desperate enough to say with the psalmist, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with him? Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. Or can we repeat, deep in my heart I long for your temple. With all that I am, I sing joyful songs to you. Psalms 84, verse 2. You long to be in God's house. You long to be with other Christians. You long to be worshipping. You long to be part of the God's fellowship. You are hungry for that. There are people like those in Zahir, in Africa, who hunger for spiritual food which they find in the scripture. Some years ago, a shipment of 750 Bibles was sent to a merchant to be sold at $3 each. With the average annual income of only $85, the people literally broke down the door of the merchant before he opened for the business just to buy a Bible. <laughs> Would that well be? Well, it shows the hunger for spiritual food in the word of God. War for everyone who thirst come to the waters. Everyone who thirst, anyone who thirst come. So the invitation is too extended to you brothers as you are hearing this word. You sister as you are hearing this word is the invitation come. Maybe you've been thinking to say where should I come? I'm not inviting you to come maybe to my local church. I'm inviting you to go and meet where God's people are meeting, wherever you are. That's where I'm inviting you to. Take the opportunity and go and listen and you'll never hunger again. May the good Lord bless you as you continue to meditate upon, this, the, upon these verses from Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 13. They are, it's one of the greatest chapters which extend this invitation to all who are thirst and who hunger for righteousness. May God bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything. Loving Father, forgive our pride in trying to second guess what you are doing and even trying to tell you at times what is best for our lives. When you have got a perfect plan that you have set for us, the purpose for all your children, keep us broken at the cross. I pray. May your will be done in our lives. Help us, Father, to understand that it is only through you that we should know your words. Thank you for your word, Lord Jesus Christ. That the scriptures will not return to you void, but will accomplish that which you have determined. Thank you for your plan of salvation, the simplicity of trusting Jesus for the forgiveness of sin and everlasting life. Say up the faith of Christians everywhere and kindle our faith the gifts in us. Knowing that the time is short, time is not in our hands. Renew our desire to share the gospel with the laws and bring men of faith in Christ in these closing days of our age. This I ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his dear name, say, Amen. Brothers and sisters, I just want to thank you. You are so wonderful. You are so great. Without you, otherwise the work of God will suffer. I want to thank you for your generosity. May you continue to support the work of God. Now, it's time for you to give your offering. 
whatever God is telling you to do, do it now. I know God is saying something to you and God has been saying this to your life. Think about what God has done to you. Think about the things God has is just done into your life. The gift of life, everything. So it's time for you to bring your offering right now. And please, as you, after my prayer, you will get the information where you can put the offering. Let us pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we bring our offering to you. We thank you for everything, especially the gift of life. Your concern for the lost world. You have said to the world, come. Come, come, come. So that you'll be satisfied. Come and drink. Those who are thirsty. Those who are hungry. Don't waste your money for the things that do not satisfy you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that our response to you is so great. And we are saying thank you, Lord, for what you have done. May you bless this offering so that it can be used for your kingdom. Bless every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. Go in the love of God and offer God's generosity to all you meet. Be generous to others as God is generous to you. May God the Father bless you. May God the Son be deep within us. May God the Holy Spirit guide us and give us life. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you from now and evermore. Amen.